Have you ever felt a flicker of knowing deep within your gut, a silent nudge that steered you clear of danger or towards an unexpected opportunity? Or perhaps you've experienced a sudden surge of inspiration for a problem that seemed unsolvable just moments before. These are whispers from your higher self, the boundless wellspring of wisdom that resides within each of us to effectively communicate with your higher self. It is essential to first understand what it is the concept of the higher self in the quiet depths of our being beyond the noise of daily life lies a profound concept that has fascinated humanity for millennia, the concept of the higher self. This idea transcends mere existence. It speaks to the essence of who we are and what we can become. Carl Jung, a pioneer in the field of analytical psychology, introduced the idea of the self as the archetype of wholeness and integration. Within in the human psyche, according to Jung individuation, the process of integrating unconscious aspects of the psyche into consciousness leads individuals towards a deeper connection with their higher self. Imagine, if you will, a version of yourself, undisturbed by doubt or fear, guided by wisdom and clarity. Beyond the immediate concerns of the world, it is an essence of you, untouched by the chaos of everyday life. This essence, often referred to as the higher self, is the truest form of your being, the purest expression of your soul throughout history. Various spiritual traditions have sought to describe this profound part of our being in Hindu philosophy. The concept of Atman represents the true self, which is identical with Brahman, the ultimate reality Buddhism, speaks of the Buddha nature, an inherent potential for enlightenment within all beings. The Sufi mystics of Islam describe the journey to the higher self as a path to uncover the divine light within. In Christianity, it is often seen as the divine spark within a part of us that remains connected to God. Each tradition in its unique way points to the same truth. Within us lies a boundless source of wisdom and peace. Your higher self is not a separate entity, but a deeper layer of your consciousness picked. You are an ocean. The surface is your everyday awareness choppy and influenced by the winds of circumstance. But beneath the waves, there is a vast, serene depth. That depth is your higher self. Calm, knowing, and infinitely wise, the higher self can be described as the aspect of our consciousness that is connected to the divine or universal source of all wisdom and love. It is our true essence, the core of our being that remains constant, despite the changes and challenges of our external life, unlike our everyday self, which is influenced by our thoughts, emotion, s and experiences the higher self exists. Beyond these, transient elements, and operates from a place of pure awareness and unconditional love. In Western traditions, the concept finds resonance in ideas such as the soul or the spirit, which strive towards transcendence and unity with the divine. The Greek philosopher Plato spoke of the soul as being divided into the rational spirited and a ative parts. According to Plato, the rational part of the soul seeks to comprehend eternal truths and higher realities. It is the seat of intellect reason and contemplate on an aspect that strives towards wisdom and understanding beyond the mundane. This rational part of the soul yearns for knowledge that transcends mere sensory experience, aiming to grasp universal principles and the essence of existence itself. The spirited part, on the other hand, represents the emotional and volitional aspect of the soul. It embodies courage, determination, and the pursuit of noble ideals. This part of the soul is driven by a sense of honor, duty, and the aspiration for excellence. It aligns with our innate desires for achievement, and moral integrity guiding us towards actions that uphold Virtue and Righteousness Lastly, the appetitive part of the soul pertains to our basic desires and impulses. It encompasses our physical needs, cravings, and passions, such as hunger, thirst, and sensual pleasures. This aspect of the soul is often associated with earthly attachments and the pursuit of material gratification. 
Plato's division of the soul illustrates a hierarchical structure where the rational part serves as the guiding force steering the spirited and repetitive parts towards har and a line. Meant with higher ideals, the ultimate goal, according to, Plato is for the rational part of the soul to govern and integrate these aspects, leading to inner balance, moral integrity, and ultimately the attainment of higher truths and unity with the divine. Your higher self is the bridge between your human experience and the infinite knowledge of the universe. It is the voice of our intuition, the source of our deepest insights, and the guiding light that leads us towards our highest potential. The higher self offers a pathway to this deeper understanding. Provi. Ding access to profound wisdom and personal guidance when we connect with our higher self, we experience a sense of clarity and certainty. This clarity comes from its ability to see beyond the illusions and distractions of everyday life and focus on what truly matters. Awakening to this inner dimension is like discovering a secret garden within you, one that has always been there patiently waiting for you to find it. Now you may wonder what prevents us from awakening to this inner dimension. What prevents us from connecting with our higher self? Connecting with our higher self offers profound benefits, including inner peace and enhanced personal growth. However many people find this connection, elusive understanding. These barriers is the first step toward overcoming them and fostering a stronger spiritual connection. One of the major factors preventing us from connecting to our higher self is the ego dominance. The ego, while necessary for navigating everyday life, can become a significant barrier to connecting with the higher self. The ego is the part of our psyche that deals with our sense of self-identity, self-preservation, and our interactions. With the external world world, the higher self operates from a higher perspective. Seeing the interconnectedness and unity of all things, the ego, on the other hand, tends to be more focused on separation, individuality, and self-interest. It is often driven by fear, competition, and the need for control and validation. The ego is ever-changing, influenced by our experiences, thoughts, and emotions. When the ego dominates our consciousness, it, it can drown out the subtle voice of the higher self which operates. From a place of unity, compassion, and higher wisdom, psychological studies exploring the dynamics of ego self-regulation and well-being supports the notion that ego dominance can hinder our connection to our higher self. They found that individuals with higher ego involvement often struggle with psychological flexibility and adaptive coping strategies. This suggests that when the ego is overly dominant, it may limit our ability to transcend self-centered perspectives and access deeper, more interconnected aspects of consciousness, which are characteristics. Tick of the higher self, the ego tends to react defensively to perceived threats, even when they are not real. This constant state of alertness and defense can create a mental noise that makes it difficult to hear the calm and wise guidance of the higher self. Fear and doubt are another big obstacles that prevent us from accessing our higher self. Fear can take many forms, such as fear of the unknown, fear of change, or fear of failure. Doubt can manifest a skepticism about the existence of the higher self or uncertainty about our ability to co connect with it. These negative emotions create a mental and emotional barrier that blocks the intuitive insights and loving guidance of the higher self in Buddhist philosophy. Fear and doubt are viewed as significant obstacles on the journey towards enlightenment or nirvana. These obstacles are deeply rooted in the concept of dua which encompasses suffering, dissatisfaction, and the inherent unsatisfactory nature of existence. According to Buddhist teachings, dua arises primarily from attachments and aversions, clinging to desires, material possession, as relationships and even ideas about oneself and the world. Attachments and aversions can be seen as manifestations of fear and doubt. Fear often arises from our attachment to things we believe are necessary for our happiness or security, while doubt stems from uncertainty about the nature of reality ourselves and our place in the world. 
These emotional and mental states not only cause suffering but also hinder spiritual progress by clouding our understanding, ing, and perception. Jean-Paul Sartre, a prominent existentialist philosopher, placed significant emphasis is on the necessity of confronting fears and anxieties to authentically engage with existence, Satra believed that these fears, particularly the fear of the unknown and the fear of change, are inherent aspects of the human condition that individuals must confront to achieve genuine self-realization. According to some, Chait Ray confronting this fear involves embracing our freedom and the responsibility that comes with it by acknowledging that our existence precedes our essence, that is, we first exist, and then define ourselves through our actions we see, and begin to navigate the uncertainty of life, this process requires us to make conscious choices and take ownership of our actions, rather than being paralyzed by the fear of what lies ahead. Past traumas and unresolved emotional issues can create barriers to accessing the higher self. These wounds can generate negative thought patterns and emotional states that keep us trapped in lower levels of consciousness. The pain and unresolved issues can act as a heavy weight preventing us from rising to the higher vibrations where the higher self resides. Uh, ailing these wounds can clear the way for a stronger connection with the higher self. Our beliefs shape our reality. If we hold limiting beliefs about ourselves, our potential, or the nature of reality, these can block our connection to the higher self. Common limiting beliefs include feelings of unworthiness, the belief that we are separate from the divine, or the notion that spiritual experiences are not accessible to ordinary people. Philosopher René Dert, known for his foundational statement, Cogito Ergosum, I think therefore I am argue argued that our B, beliefs and thoughts fundamentally shape our understanding of existence in the context of limiting beliefs, hindering our connection to the higher self. Descartes' philosophy prompts us to introspect on how our beliefs influence not only our perception of ourselves, but also our relationship with spirituality and the divine. Our environment plays a significant role in our ability to connect with our higher self. A chaotic, noisy, or negative environment can make it challenging to achieve the inner stillness required for this connection surrounding ourselves with supportive positive influences and creating a peaceful space for spiritual practice can make a big difference. This might involve decluttering our living spaces, spending time in nature, or cultivating relationships with people who support and understand our spiritual journey. From a young age, we are conditioned by cultural and societal norms that often emphasize material success, competition, and external validation. These values can be at odds with the qualities of the higher self. Think of philosopher Friedrich Neiker. He was critical of societal norms and believed stifled individual. Potential and creativity, he posited that many cultural values, especially those emphasizing material success and external validation, perpetuate a hard mentality that suppresses the authentic expression of the self. Breaking free from this conditioning involves questioning societal norms and seeking out alternative perspectives that align more closely with our inner truth. Many people are simply unaware of the concept of the higher self and its potential benefits. Without this awareness, there is no motivation to seek out and establish a connection. Through understanding the nature of the highest self and engaging in dedicated practices, you can tap into a source of inner wisdom that has always been available to you. But what does it mean practically in our everyday lives to connect with and embody this higher self? Connect with your higher self. It beckons us towards a journey of self-discovery and spiritual evolution, where we strive to align our thoughts, actions, and aspirations with a higher purpose. It invites us to transcend the limitations of ego-driven desires and impulses and instead to cultivate virtues such as compassion, wisdom, and unconditional love. Consider the story of Siddhartha Gamer who became the Buddha, the Awakened One, his journey from a sheltered prince to an enlightened being illustrates the transformative power of seeking one's higher self. 
The Buddha's teachings emphasize the importance of inner peace and mindfulness as pathways to realizing our true nature. Beyond suffering and impermanence in the Christian tradition, the life of Jesus Christ offers a narrative of D.I., vine embodiment and selfless love his teachings on. Forgiveness, compassion, and the kingdom of heaven within resonate deeply with the concept of the higher self as a source of infinite grace and spiritual guidance. At the heart of this journey lies a fundamental question, how do we access this higher self? How to access your higher self? The first step is turning inward in a world filled with distractions. This can seem like a hard task. However, moments of stillness and introspection often reveal the subtle whispers of our inner wisdom, one of the fundum. Entau principles in connecting with our higher self is the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness is the art of being fully present in each moment, aware of our thoughts, feelings, and surrounding without judgment, the teachings of each art toll. A contemporary spiritual teacher highlight the transformative power of living in the present moment in his book, The Power of Now Taller invites us to let go of past regrets and future anxieties and to fully engage with the present. This presence is where we find the higher self, not in some distant future, but here. And no, you, when we cultivate mindfulness, we create space for... The higher self to emerge, we become more attuned to the subtle nuances of our inner world and the guidance it offers in moments of mindfulness. We can discern the difference between the chatter of the ego and the wisdom of the higher self. This clarity allows us to make choices that align with our higher purpose and deepest values. Consider the story of the Taist sage Lai, who spoke of the importance of finding harmony within oneself. The T.A. Ching, his seminal work, emphasizes living in accordance with the Toao, or the way this involves a balance of action and non-action, an interplay between doing and being, by cultivating inner stillness and observing the natural flow of life. One can align more closely with the higher self, experiencing a sense of unity with the universe. Through this contemplative presence, we begin to notice the synchronicities and subtle signs that guide us. These moments of clarity often come when we least expect them in the midst of everyday activities. A conversation with a friend, a passage in a book, or a moment of silence can suddenly reveal a profound truth that resonates deeply with our inner being. As we deepen our practice of turning inward, we begin to uncover layers of our identity that are shaped by past experiences, societal expectations, and personal fears. This process can be both enlightening and unsettling as we come face to face with parts of ourselves that we may have long ignored or suppressed. Yet it is in this confrontation with our shadow, as Jung would call it, that we find the key to transformation. Jungian psychology teaches us that embracing the shadow, those hidden or unconscious aspects of our psyche is essential for wholeness. By acknowledging and integrating these parts, we release the inner conflict and allow the light of the higher self to shine more brightly. This is not an easy path, but it is a profoundly rewarding one. It requires courage, honesty, and a willingness to see ourselves without judgment in this journey. It is essential to trust your intuition. Your higher self often communicates through subtle feelings and insights that can easily be dismissed by the rational mind, intuitio, and is the language of the higher self. It speaks in a soft, knowing voice, guiding you towards what is right for you. By learning to trust this inner voice, you strengthen your connection with your higher self. Another way to connect with your higher self is through dreams. They are a bridge to the spiritual world, a way for our higher self to communicate with us. Dreams often bypass the filters of the, the conscious mind, allowing the higher self to communicate more freely before going to sleep. Set an intention to receive guidance from your high. Our self pay attention to recurring symbols and themes as they often hold important messages. The practice of gratitude plays a significant role in aligning with the higher self. 
Gratitude shifts our focus from what is lacking in our lives to what is already present and abundant. This shift in perspective opens our hearts and minds, fostering a deeper connection with our higher self. And the universe gratitude could involve expressing appreciation to others, acknowledging the beauty in the world around you, or simply taking a moment to reflect you and the blessings in your life by regularly practicing gratitude. We cultivate a positive mindset that attracts more of what we appreciate. Reinforcing our connection with the higher self. The wise wisdom of the higher self is not a one sees fits all solution, but a deeply intimate and personal guidance system. Consider the wisdom of Rumi, the Sufi mystic and poet who wrote The Wound, is the place where the light enters you. It reminds us that our struggles and challenges are not obstacles, but opportunities for growth and transformation by embrace. In our wounds and seeking the light within them, we move closer to our higher self. In practical terms, this might mean looking at our lives with a new perspective. Instead of viewing difficulties as failures, we can see them as lessons. Each challenge we face is a step on the path towards greater self-awareness and spiritual maturity. This shift in perspective can be liberating, allowing us to navigate life's ups and downs with greater ease and grace. The process of connecting with the higher self is often grade you all and requires patience in a society that T values quick results and instant gratification. It can be challenging to stay committed to practices that may not yield immediate tangible benefits. Impatience can lead to frustration and the abandonment of spiritual practices. Cultivating patience involves setting realistic expectations and understanding that spiritual growth is a lifelong journey. It can be helpful to celebrate small milestones and acknowledge the subtle shifts and insights that occur along the way. Connecting with your higher self is not merely a spiritual exercise. See but a path to understanding and embodying your deepest truths. It requires patience, commitment, and a willingness to cultivate awareness and trust in the subtle guidance that arises from within. As you engage in these practices, you create a sacred space within yourself where the wisdom of your higher self can unfold and illuminate your path. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.